In the past few months, it feels like I keep getting the same two questions, whether I bring something up in a video or I don't bring something up in a video. And those two questions roughly <laughs> translate into why am I not recommending Printify in my videos as a print-on-demand provider and why did I stop making videos about the design app Kittle? In this video, I'm going to share with you guys the reasons why I stopped recommending Printify and stopped working with Kittle, stopped making tutorials about them, and stopped sharing Printify product reviews here on the channel. Before we get started, there are three things that I want to get out of the way. The first is this video is based on my opinion and my experience alone working both with Printify and with Kittle in different levels of working together, let's call it that. And a lot of that relates to me being a content creator and not just someone who does print on demand or sells anything online. The second thing that I would like to say is, regardless of the fact that I no longer wish to affiliate those companies or recommend them, you guys should do what's good for you. If you're designing with Kittle and getting amazing results and you love the platform, go ahead. And if you like using Printify as a supplier and you have no issues with Printify, use them as a supplier. This is in no way, shape or form meant to deter you from using a certain tool or a certain supplier. This is literally because these questions have been asked multiple times in the group, especially I've had to, um, remove or not approve posts that were asking about this because I wasn't ready to give the answer yet. And again, there is nothing for me to say bad things about the company, just about why I chose to stop working with them as a content creator. And the third thing I need to say before we get started is, hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayo and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And on this channel, I recommend a buttload of tools, whether it's Rapper, Creative Fabrica, Canva, Kittle. I recommend suppliers such as Printful, Awkward Styles, Printify. I've had videos about Chinese suppliers that are less known and very cheap. I was also talking about multiple shop builders like Fourth Wall and Shopify and WooCommerce and, and Payhip. Why did I forget Payhip? I've also been recommending Hostinger as my hosting service and I have been doing that before I was a Hostinger affiliate. I also recommend mock-up tools such as Placeit and Canvi and a bunch of AI tools like Copy AI, ChatGPT, Lexica AI, and so many other tools and apps and platforms and marketplaces where you can sell print on demand or printables. But it's been very noticeable by a lot of you who have DM'd me or commented on videos that I keep saying that I don't work with Printify and they want to know why and that I literally stopped making videos that relate to Kittle. I want to start with Printify first as to why I'm not recommending them. Now with Printify, I have issues both as a buyer or a seller in that case as well, and as a content creator. I have made several orders from Printify. And in fact, I wanted to share these orders with you on the screen right now. However, those orders are gone. They literally disappeared from my dashboard. I've been on the chat with Printify this morning. They don't know why this happened. They can still see that I paid for certain orders. They just can't find the orders. Maybe let's add that to the reasons of why I wouldn't trust a company. But in any case, I really wanted to feature these things on the screen. There are probably many others that I don't remember. But what I do know is that the majority of the items that I have ordered from Printify I have never received. Now here comes the part where this might not be relating to you. I live in Bulgaria and maybe this is an issue of shipping to Bulgaria. Now despite what a lot of people think, Bulgaria is not some third world country in the middle of nowhere. In my co-working I have pretty much 500 or 600 mega speed of internet. At home yesterday I had 250. It's a very industrialized place that keeps getting more industrialized. We are also a part of the European Union, so everything shipped from the EU arrives here pretty quickly. And I know that because I'm ordering things from Printful via my fourth wall store on the monthly or, or even on the weekly. And a lot of the things that are made in the European Union arrive here within a week. 
a week of me making them and ordering them arrive here in a week. It's also true to say that things can get stuck in customs and can get stuck in the post office. And here's something you might not be aware of. I live in Bansko, Bulgaria. It's a very, very small village in the Pirin Mountains. It's a ski resort. It's a hiking tourism attraction in the summer. And pretty much every service provider person here knows me. There is no way that a package would arrive to Bansko with my name on it and it will not reach me. Just to explain the extent of this, the current complex that I live in right now, I wasn't living here two years ago. Two years ago today, I was leaving with Misho in a totally different complex on the other side of town. I had made an order to that complex. I don't remember if it was Amazon or something. I don't remember. And I wrote the correct address of that complex. And then I get the receptionist from this complex calling me, uh, May? There is the delivery guy for you with a package. The package has a different address on it, but he saw my name, so he's delivering it here because he knows I live here. So there is no problem of me getting any kind of packages here because I've been here for almost three years and pretty much speedy, econ, the post office. The post office even brings packages to me instead of leaving them at the post office because they know I have a disability and it's hard for me to get there. So there is no reason why a package shouldn't find its way over to me, unless, you know, they wrote it wrong. And in that case, I have several examples when it comes to Printify. The first one is this t-shirt that I've ordered. I actually ordered this t-shirt along with another similar one from Printful, and I wanted to make a video comparing both of them because they were both the same type of t-shirt, but I wanted to compare the printing of Printify and Printful, the prices, how long it takes to get here. About, I think it was a month after, I contacted customer support. It was still saying that it's on its way to me and it never arrived. They said that they can't see a problem in their system. And then they told me, by the way, we actually already stopped working with that supplier. So you're not gonna get the t-shirt because we're not working with that supplier anymore. The thing is that you could still order this t-shirt. It's still active. There is no information back then on that t-shirt that it was discontinued and no one contacted me to tell me that this will actually never be made or shipped. Funny enough, I got that t-shirt five months after, not because it was lost in the post office, but because the original post postage on it was from a week and a half before. So a month after I ordered a t-shirt, Printify told me that they stopped working with the supplier and three and a half months later, the supplier shipped it to me. That was one case. Then came the case of the two necklaces. The necklace with the ocean view and the necklace, I think it was uh, with green and, and, and uh, black. I think I, I, I have a photo of it somewhere. So I order these two necklaces with another product. For the life of me, I don't remember and I can't check my orders because they don't exist anymore because of a bug. I don't know, Printify weren't really clear. They were actually pretty shocked why I don't have an orders page. So I think it was a few months later that I was like, hey, I never got these necklaces. And that was when I was ordering a lot of things, a lot of things. So I contacted customer support for this order of two necklaces and something else that I don't remember and won't appear because my orders page is gone. And to my surprise, now I had to deal with three customer representatives because the order contained three items. So it split itself into three tickets. Now I can understand why it split itself into a ticket relating to the necklaces and a ticket relating to something else because those were two different suppliers, but this was the same necklace twice, like the same type of necklace. So I had to had the same exact conversation three times, replying three times to three different email threads on the same order. Every single time that I got a reply back, it was from another representative over on Printify, even if I replied in the same moment that I got the email, and pretty much I had to explain the whole thing all over again. The orders were showing to be in production. The first response that I got is that there is a limit to the time you can complain about a product after you've received it. It's two weeks. And I was like, okay, 
but it says it's in production. It doesn't say arrived. And then I saw arrived and said, oh, it didn't. And I'm complaining. And that's when they responded with, oh, that's a bug in the system. We manually changed it to arrived. So it's been in production for months. But when I complain that it's not arriving to me, they change it retroactively to have arrived three months ago. So that means that I now cannot complain. And that's when I did something nasty and said, okay, that's what I'm going to tell my YouTube viewers when they're going to ask, you know, where is the necklace? And at that point, they decided to tell me that the actual problem was that this was actually never shipped because my address was wrong. Okay. I gave them my address again, the address line one with the number of the street and the name of the street, the address line two with the name of the complex and the apartment number, and then the city and then the zip code and all of that. Again, if anything has my name on it and it somehow lands in Bansko, it's going to find me. The delivery guy is going to call me and give it to me. And that's when three days after they told me that they cannot ship to this address because the address doesn't appear in their system. What they wrote in the address after I wrote on address line one, the name of the street and the number, and in address line two, the name of the hotel, they took the name of the hotel as the name of the street and added the street number. So it doesn't exist. And I literally replied, can't you see that you mix the two names? She said, no, she did everything correctly. It's the problem with my address. After many, many, many emails, they finally got my address right. And about a month after, I got one of the necklaces. Not both. One. God knows why. Last product story for my interaction with Printify as someone who's trying to order online was a journaling notebook. This one that appears on the screen right now. I ordered it with matte finish and blank pages. Then I got the notebook with matte finish and lined pages. I was actually going to make a review about that and I already started filming and then I opened the notebook, realized it was wrong and said, you know what, let's contact customer support and see, you know, how they do customer support. I think it was one of the first items that I ordered from them. I was pretty naive at that point. And then I went into the page where you're supposed to uh, write down that uh, it arrived wrong and you wanted to be reprinted. That page had a bug that started blinking the screen over. And for those of you who don't know, have a neurological issue. So I spared you guys of a video of me having a seizure throughout it. When I got out of this seizure, I contacted customer support directly, explained the situation to them and asked for a reprint of this item with matte finish and blank inside. They responded with, please do it on the system. I replied again. I am sorry, as I explained, I have a neurological problem and your system has a bug that makes the screen flash and I had a seizure. I do not wish to die changing a notebook for, for Printify, so I'm not going to do that. They said, yes, but we think it's fixed now. Can you check that? No, I'm not going to check that. I do not want to risk having two seizures on the same day. They said, okay, we'll do that for you and change the matte cover notebook with... <laughs> with lines to matte cover notebook with blank. A few weeks after, I got a glossy cover notebook with blank paper. I didn't contact them then. These were just three product stories of multiple products that I've ordered from Printify. The majority of these products never ever arrived with customer support giving me ridiculous answers as a reply or in some cases, not replying to me at all. And that's the first reason why I never integrated with Printify, and I don't recommend other people to do that, because I don't want to recommend something that when I test it out, it's wrong. Again, if you're working with Printify for years and all of your orders come out right, go for it. I don't care. <laughs> this is not the point of this video. The second reason why I stopped working with Printify was because it was really hard for me to work with them as a content creator. I was approached by Printify many times through both of my email addresses to become an affiliate and to jump on a call and let's see if we can collaborate. At the beginning, I was all for that. I got an email, I was really excited. This was when the channel was like five months old or something. 
and we were talking and said, okay, let's schedule the Zoom call. And that person never showed up. I tried replying to that person and nothing. About a few months after, I got an email from someone else on Printify saying, hey, we saw your channel. We would really like to work with you. And at that point, I said, I know. We've discussed that before. We were about to schedule a phone call. We did. We spoke. I don't remember who that person was. I don't remember. I think it was Google Meet or Zoom. I don't know. We spoke a little bit briefly. I explained that I don't make sponsored videos. So I don't make like a video sponsored by explaining why you guys are the best platform in the world. What I do is I do product reviews. And if they want to, you know, up my account in a certain amount of money so I can make some test orders, that would be cool. He said, okay, and he'll keep me updated in the next few days. And then he didn't. About three months after that, I got another email from someone else on Printify saying, hey, May, we, we, I encountered you on, on YouTube. Printify would really like to work with you. And I told him, well, this already happened. So, oh, that person was fired. Uh, I'm handling this now. And this thing went on for about five times. After the fifth time, I said, look, and I've already been ordering stuff. The items that I'm ordering do not arrive here. Those who are arriving here are after extensive amount of customer care, which I do not wish to do. And I'm not going to start a relationship with you guys as a content creator. It's really a waste of time for me to keep doing this and going through this. I have other things to do. I wish you guys all the best. They are still till this day sending me affiliate emails, even though I have requested them multiple times to stop doing that. So that's my story with Printify. Again, my story my experience, both as someone who's wanting to get products and as a content creator, which probably has nothing to do with you. If you've been working with them for two years, and this is the part where people don't understand. In a lot of these companies, there are multiple fulfillment center. If there is a problem with the, with the fulfillment centers in the European Union that keeps happening again and again, and you're selling in Canada, it probably wouldn't affect you. So if you're working with them and your clients are getting their orders correctly and on time and you personally manage to get good customer service, by all means, work with them. I am always tempted to work with them. They have brilliant selection of products. They have really, really cool products. It's just became really exhausting for me. And if I have to look at the time spent on something versus the result, which in a lot of cases would have resulted in a video of... Let me show you a print on the man necklace that never arrived. The result is pretty much null. So I stop wasting my energy on that. And that is to answer the question of why I don't recommend Printify. Moving on to Kittle. Um, I've been seeing some stuff on some of my videos. Did I make up with Canva? Uh, because I've been recommending them and a lot more DMs and comments of why are there no Kittle videos. There were also supposed to be Kittle contests way before the invalid traffic. And the story with Kittle, I would have to say, started, I don't even know, two years ago? Something years ago? With a very lovely content person that was handling me and a lot of other affiliates. She was extremely nice. She was also from the Balkans, so we were drinking our yogurt I run and making jokes about that. And it was a very pleasant experience. And I feel like at this point, I have to explain something about myself. There are multiple content creators out there. Some people make content based on sponsored ads, like sponsored content. Some people make content based on what they're doing on the day-to-day. -day. I like to work with people. I think I mentioned it in a lot of videos. I like, you know, my, my birthday videos and the two years on YouTube video. I like working with people. I have someone to talk to on the other side. I have someone to bounce ideas from. And Coming from the world of this on the other way around, when I was covering up for the affiliate manager of our company, I can tell you that when a person is affiliating multiple companies, their connection with you is important. Whether that connection is a friendly connection, to see a friendly face every few weeks or get a friendly email, or literally updating you on things. So this is something that I tell every affiliate that I start working with. Every single thing that happens on your platform, please let me know. Because maybe it's a big thing. Maybe it's a big thing for my audience and they don't know it. Maybe they think it's a small thing, but it's big for my audience. Maybe it's a big thing for them, but not really relevant for us. Let me know about any change. If this change is big, 
I'll make a video about it. If this change is small, I'll mention it in one of those uh, print on a man news videos that I really loved doing. And for a while there, working with Kittle was a breeze. It was really nice working with my first content and work with my first contact and working with Drew. And then my contact was replaced. The new contact didn't like the fact that I'm talking to do to Drew directly, even though when I was trying to make things like a contest through her, it just wouldn't move. And no, I can't plan a contest for four weeks from now and then finalize it at the last moment if I have to plan my content in advance. So she kind of had a problem with me talking to Drew directly when it's a lot easier talking to him directly since he's the one in charge of that. And he told me, never mind, just speak to me. It's fine. We'll just see her on everything. That point of contact that I had back then, and back then I mean pre-August 2023, didn't really update me on anything. I mean, I remember sitting here one day, this was Tuesday morning, and this was Tuesday morning, and she's in the same time zone as me. And someone sent me, did you see that Kittle did this? So I emailed her, hi, I saw that there is something new on Kittle that no one told me about. And it was actually launched Wednesday, like almost a week before. She replied to me the next day saying, again, I don't care that she replied the next day. Just, you know, listen to me on this. That she didn't have time to tell me about this update because it was weekend. So. This update started Wednesday. She could have emailed Thursday, Friday, then there's the weekend, then Monday, and Tuesday. She didn't tell me from Wednesday to Wednesday about an update because it was the weekend. And I was like, what are you talking about? Now, again, if a company wants to work with bigger YouTubers, go ahead, have fun. I really am not going to take it personally. I don't care. But I like working with people. It's it's kind of what fills my day. Dude, I'm alone in this apartment all the time. It's really nice just to talk to people. There were many things, many, many other things that fell through. Ideas with contests that we started talking about and then she was supposed to handle it with Drew. Never told him about these things. There were so many ideas for other things that should have started. She never got back to me for those emails. And eventually, that girl left Kittle. I don't know if she left or she was fired, but she left. I do know that because of August 2023 and the invalid traffic thing on YouTube. So for those of you who don't remember, there was a problem with the YouTube ads and it was happening across the board to many YouTubers. It was a bug on YouTube. We had no idea when it was going to get fixed. And I sat down and it was either I'm dumping all of this business altogether, focusing on my own print on demand, um, I've had enough with teaching, or I'm doing something else altogether, or I'm finding a way to continue working on. I decided on opening the Substack for the newsletter and Patreon for exclusive content. And back then it was like, you know, for content because YouTube wasn't paying me anything. And at that point, I also contacted a lot of the people that I work with. And that was, I think, the very first time that people started commenting, why is Kittle not on this list? Because I have mentioned in several videos the big support that I got from this company, from this company, from this company. And I didn't say, and Kittle didn't gave a damn. I just didn't mention Kittle. And that was enough for people to ask me. I've even had to unapprove people on our Facebook group, tagging Drew, asking him why. <laughs> So I didn't want to have any bad blood. I didn't want to make a scene out of it. I just wanted to carry on with my work. And again, me not working with them or me not wanting to work with them is not anything dramatic. It's just life happens. And if you think about it, let's say you're a salesperson and you work for a company and you can choose to focus on selling five different types of products. Each of these products has a product engineer or product team that you can speak to. Four out of these five teams is constantly sending you updates, showing you examples, hopping on a call with you to give you ideas for videos, and one of them doesn't. You'll end up drifting towards the one that give you content ideas or give you updates. One of these updates, which is actually not legal, I remember getting an email from my content, from my contact, and again, this was a little bit pre-August, about something new that Kittle has. I didn't reply. 
I, I don't remember why. I think I was busy. And then I got an email from Juna from Detour Shorts. And I was like, why is Juna emailing me? Not that I mind. Juna is an awesome person, but I just, it looked like he was replying to me. And I don't remember we had an ongoing conversation. And that's when I realized the contact from Kittle emailed all of the people she's working with visibly. So the private personal email that I have that is not advertised on this channel is now along the list of every other YouTuber that Kittle is working with publicly. <laughs> to that, she thought it was kind of a funny mistake, even though in Germany, it's, uh, I think Kittle is in Germany, it's not a funny mistake, it's actually a crime. It's illegal to do that. They have really different and strict privacy laws, and I really did not like that. Then they said that they're going to move the whole thing onto Discord, which I wasn't using at the time, and they're going to keep updates there, even though they sent me a link to access the affiliate-only Discord, which didn't work, so I wasn't able to get any updates. And I'm like, dude, if you don't want to give me updates and you don't want me to be an affiliate, just say so. Don't keep sending me links to things that I can't access. And then came, again, August 2023, with the invalid traffic. So I was contacting multiple companies that I was working with, obviously not just Kittle, uh, Repper, Hostinger, uh, I think it was Canvi as well, uh, Creative Fabrica, and the responses were a variety of those. With Repper, it was, you know, let's brainstorm, do you want to make videos on our channel? Um, let's find a way to work together. With Creative Fabric, I think it was the longest conversation that we had, that I had with Larissa. I think it was the longest conversation that we had. And I actually started giving her some ideas um, about, you know, newsletter and Pinterest and stuff like that and blogging. And she was like, actually, she gave me some examples of some bloggers they work with that they make more money than YouTuber affiliates. Like, this was supposed to be going great. She totally like told me like look you were burned out from YouTube this was the perfect timing everything's gonna be fine like you can still give valuable content you'll still get compensated everything's golden and the, with Hostinger for example I just got a new point of contact a few weeks before that so I, we weren't really familiarized with each other so I think her response was somewhere in the lines of look I don't know you that well if you want someone to like figuratively speaking, hold your hand and tell you everything is going to be okay, let's hop on a call. But if you want to have a call with us just to make sure we want to continue working with you, then I can tell you flat out, we are going to continue working with you. Whether you're on Patreon or on a blog, we don't care. We like your audience. We like working with you. We like the way that you feature our products. So if you want to have a call with me just to get that reassurance online in the phone or in face, let's hop on it. But if you're busy planning a bunch of other stuff, just so you know, we're with you and we can hop on that call whenever you want. That was like actually like a really good response. I'm getting emotional. I love my contacts over on Hostinger and Rapper. Um, and then came Kittle. The response was, we actually already need to hop on a call because my point of contact is uh, leaving the company. So I have a new one. And I was like, Perfect. A new one. I don't have to explain to her how we're going to do things differently because it's not going to be different for her. It's just a new thing. That call was supposed to be half an hour. The first 15 minutes was the previous point of contact, the one who's leaving, telling us all about her travel plans with me trying to get her off the line because it's very nice. But you guys told me you only have half an hour and we have a lot of things to discuss. She kept on repeating the fact that this call actually has no real need because she already informed the new contact of everything we do together. And I was thinking to myself, one, did you inform her that every plan we had of doing a collaboration together you forgot about? Or did you inform her how we work together when I have a YouTube channel and now I'm not going to have one? Because you couldn't have informed more what we were doing. This is literally the conversation for that. And then I literally, after 15 minutes, said, I think you should get out of this conversation so we can continue talking about what we came here to talk about and have a safe trip. The new point of contact then spoke about the sale for students and teachers, which, you know, I get it. 
there is a page for that, send me the page. But we need to talk about how am I going to work with Kittle now if I'm not going to be that much on YouTube? If we're going to do contests with a group, uh, what happens with all the contests that we didn't have? She kept repeating the fact that she knows already everything that we are doing together. She knows how we're working together. I tried to tell her that it's changing. And then she said, well, we don't have time to talk about it now because this conversation um, has gone long enough without me saying a word in it. It was 15 minutes of the previous contact talking about her travel plans throughout Europe and 15 minutes of the new contact explaining to me that they have student prices now. And then she said, well, I don't think we have anything else to cover. And I'm like, um, the topic of the conversation was how everything I do is changing. Yeah, but I feel like we cover we didn't cover that. We didn't even speak about that once. Well, if you want to write me an email about that, an email about your plan. It was really confusing for me, especially after doing this with Repper, with Hostinger, with Creative Fabrica, even with Canvi, doing this with multiple suppliers that I'm working with. This was so bizarre. And then she just hung up. And I was like, okay. After a few weeks later, she sent me an email about something. I think they had the print stuff, the, the printing of the clothing, which I need to design something. It has to be on YouTube. Again, I wasn't doing YouTube. Um, and I would have to make a review about how amazing the quality of the product is, which I do not say products are amazing unless they are. And I am not signing contracts that say that I'm going to say a product is amazing before I see the product. Ta-da! Um, and it has to be within a specific frame of time, which if it's shipped from the U.S., that time would be impossible. And when I tried asking questions about what type of t-shirt it will be for me to know what size to order, where it's shipped from, she just never replied. So we never did that collaboration. And it's not just the point of when I have these relationships with my affiliate contacts in those companies, then we can plan more and more contests or more things together. It's when we don't have this contact literally things that they want affiliates to do, I can't because I have questions and no one seemed to want to answer. And then came October 7th. That was another uh, big video that people kept asking me about Drew and about Kittle. I am not picking anyone's side here. This is not a political thing. If there was a massive, even natural event, where you live, and many, many, many people that you know passed away in a brutal way. You'd expect people who know you to say, I hope you're okay. I got emails about that from Creative Fabrica. I got the longest email in the world from Hostinger. I literally sat down with with my contact on CF, and, and I remember with Wouter from Rapper, I think it was what almost two hours of just crying. And Kittle said nothing. And it was made very aware to me that they said nothing when so many of you guys kept asking me that. And back then I told myself, you know what? I'm not going to make any decisions. I'm, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm emotional. It's okay. The thing is, I don't think men ever get this. Because I was employed many years in the tech industry. And if someone pisses someone off and he tells them to go F themselves, then he's a man, you know? But if a woman does that, then she's emotional. And I don't like that comparison. And you know what? I'm not employed by anyone. I pay my own bills. I'm employed by me. And I sat down and I realized that I can make videos about other things. Maybe I shouldn't make videos about Kittle right now. And I wasn't even making a lot of videos right now. And then came Black Friday. I got an email from Kittle with a Black Friday uh, deal. And there was, a, there was a coupon code for Black Friday. There was a date where that coupon code is going to be activated. And I made a video that went live about an hour after that coupon code was supposed to be activated with a bunch of other discounts for Black Friday. And because Black Friday happened after October 7th and a bunch of people in the world decided that all Jews are the problem, 
the coupon code didn't work. Not because of October 7th, but because of Kittle. And it's not that I got emails or DMs or comments saying the coupon code doesn't work. It was more like, see, this is how Jews make money. They lure you in with a fake discount and a coupon code that doesn't work. And you're going to buy it in full price. The coupon code and the discount was actually phrased incorrectly. The 50% off that I was supposed to mention in the video of Black Friday wasn't actually 50%. It was 50% on the yearly price from the monthly price, which means it was not 50%, which based on the laws of Israel, which I am obligated to, is misleading consumers, which is a crime that I'm not going to do on YouTube because I can get sued for that just because it's how Kittle wants to phrase this specific sale, which is why I immediately removed that email. I emailed um, the girl from Kittle that the coupon code isn't working and I I'm done. I'm going to skip out of that with the Black Friday. I made a different Black Friday video with other things that came to light after that. And she replied to me with, with a general email to everybody because it was so popular, we decided to change the time. So it's already working. No, it should have already been working. I checked the time. It should have already been working, completely ignoring the mistake that she made. And actually, there are two different codes for the two different plans, not one. To that, I responded with, given everything that happened in the last few months, I think I should really reconsider even if I want to work with you guys or not. This was also after a previous Kittle coupon code didn't work many months before because the previous contact didn't think that she should check if a coupon code works with a tech team before telling me it's live and to make a video about it. I think in the past three years I've had twice issues that coupon codes were not working. Both of them were with Kittle. And then started the new year, and one of my New Year's resolutions were to eliminate shiny new thing syndrome and even focus more on what I want to put in the business. I want to do more marketing videos. I want to do more blogging videos. I want to really talk about product design, not just to fart out t-shirt designs. This is my goal. My goal is now different. And I was looking at all of the companies that I've been working with and told myself this is the time to narrow them down. Because I am one person, I'm a one a one woman show, and I want to be focused on what I do and who I present in this channel. Printify was never even on that list. I stopped working with them a year before, and Kittle didn't make the list for personal reasons. About a week ago, I think, I got another email from Kittle Affiliate, and it, it daunted on me. It was really funny. Dear Valued Affiliate, or something, or Dear Valued Partner. I replied something like, no, this is not information that I'm going to share. I don't want to. And this is after years of every single update they had, they didn't tell me. <laughs> I'm not going to do this. You have never responded to me saying that I think I shouldn't be working with you. So, no, I don't find it. I find it actually kind of ironic or kind of weird that you write, dear valued partner. Uh, she replied with, it's been crazy here. We actually haven't spoken in a year. Yes, we have. Uh, please let me know how you wish to proceed. And I wrote to her, since we have spoken in less than a year, and you obviously don't remember that, I get that you guys are busy. I would like to stop getting emails from Kittle. And that's why I'm not recommending or not using Kittle anymore. Am I recommending Kittle to other people? Well go for it. If you like working with Kittle, if you find their designer good for your needs, if you make really good quality products with them, work with them. It's not like they beat me up, stole my money, and, and destroyed me. I've had consistent issues with my point of contact in Kittle that literally put a, damp put a damper on plans that we've had together Multiple things that I've planned with these affiliate content, points of contact, didn't come to fruition. And I don't want to waste my time planning something 
with a company and that something is not going to happen. This is my time. No one is paying me for this time. If she's sitting in the office and she makes plans with me on office times, she's getting paid. If we're making plans and they never happen, I never get paid. I never make a video. This never happens. And I want to focus more on that. And when it comes personally, I don't need to use Kittle. I have Procreate. I illustrate my own things. There are so many tools out there. So I'll say this one last time. If you want to use Kittle, go ahead. You have my blessing. You probably don't have my affiliate link or my affiliate discount. I know that they have a new discount now somewhere. I chose not to share it. If you go to any other print on demand channel, you might find that they have a discount that is valid there. I'm not sharing it because I no longer work with them. So this is to answer your questions that have been repeating themselves for months. Why I don't recommend Printify? Because majority of the items don't arrive. They arrive incorrectly. Customer service is a hassle and it's really hard working with them as a creator. And why I stopped working with Kittle, switching between content person to contact person, dropping the ball on many, many things that we should have done, ignoring messages that I sent them, not alerting me on any updates, sending me irrelevant things that show that they don't know what we're doing, and literally ignoring me saying that we have an issue. So I'm personally not working with these companies. If you want to work with these companies, go ahead. I'm not even deleting the Kittle videos that I have. I think that you guys can do so much with Kittle. So much. They have so many really cool properties with text morphing. And I said it in one of the videos. It's as if I took text from like Canva or even Procreate and then transferred it into Procreate and I can morph it around. Guess what? I can do that without Kittle. I have Procreate and Clip Studio Paint and a bunch of other softwares. I don't know if I want your comments in the comments down below because usually when I say something bad about a company, I get a lot of very mean comments. But you know what? Go ahead. I would love to hear if you have really good experience with Printify, if you've worked with them and you love with them. I also know that they have the pop-up shops. So maybe your comment can help someone else who's not in Bulgaria. Um, I would love to hear about your experience with Kittle, if you love them, what you think about them. And if you really love Kittle and really love using them, that's not going to hurt me at all. I just want you to find the right tools for you. With that said, I am going to make a video about the tools that I am using. And um, hopefully, I don't know, might give you some ideas, might not. And as for future content, while I'm not going to be using Kittle, I'm using a bunch of other stuff that you can either do with Kittle or with a different software. And I'm a lot more leaning towards, I think, like product reviews and explaining about designs and getting creative and how to niche down and marketing tutorials and how to build websites. So there's plenty of content to go around. But with that being said, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I would appreciate a like down below on the video. It really does help it with the YouTube algorithm. I really hope you learned something new or at least got an answer to one or two of the questions you've had about why I'm no longer recommending Kittle and why I don't work with Printify products. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Oh, that was too short, right? That was too short? Wait, wait, wait. I'll do it again. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!